I need the USB C to um, HDMI. Oh, we don't have one here. The other room? Maybe the other room. Okay. Can you go grab one from the other room, do you think? Okay. Otherwise, are you able to put my. I guess you can just put my slides up and give me a quick. Yeah, I can. Uh, okay. Shoot. So, so what I need is, is I need a USB C to HDMI. USB C to HDMI. Let, let me go check the other room because I had one the other day. Thank you, thank you. Um, don't worry. And are you going to need a, like, um, I clicker? Can, I can just use this. Okay, yeah, good, be. good. So let me just open the email. I have the rights to. Yeah, you have yeah. the rights to edit it. You have the rights. I give you all rights. Uh, and is it okay to just mirror the screens? Yeah. Yeah. Mirror okay. the screens. Okay. Can you can you see my screen? Oh. Uh, there we go. Okay. So let, let me go full screen here. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just do this. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Okay. Excellent. So folks can come on forwards if they like. Um, you can see a little bit better. Some of the text might be a little bit small. Perfect. So um, I'm James Heilman. I'm uh, with Wiki Project Med Foundation and uh, for this here talk here, I'm going to be discussing the relaunch of our translation effort. Um, so thank you all for joining. So a little bit of history around what we've been doing. The, the healthcare translation work was something we started back in 2011. So it's been going on now for um, a dozen years. Uh, we initially began with partners at Translators Without Borders, among others. And um, you know, the first process was a little bit cum cumbersome, but we did manage to create 19,000 um, translations into other languages, representing more than 22 million words of text on various languages of Wikipedia. We saw work happen in more than 150 languages, and there was more than 3,250 translators who took part in these efforts. Uh, with respect to the translations that we created on these key healthcare topics, they've received about 3.7 billion page views um, since uh, 2015. And this represents, you know, translation is a very common method that uh, we get health care information in other languages of Wikipedia. Translation represents about 40 to 50 percent of our healthcare content that exists in uh, non-English languages. So the initial starting content was um, uh, 1,300 articles. And what we're, we're doing is we're improving the leads of the English Wikipedia articles, making them a good summary of the topic in question, and then putting those out for translation. So just those three to four paragraphs of content, we're encouraging people to translate into other languages. The English articles themselves received about 4.5 billion page views, uh, those 1,300 since uh, 2015. So over time, we generated more and more content. Uh, there's more and more 
content for us just to keep an eye on and try to keep up to date on, on English Wikipedia. And, you know, we were doing much of the moving manually. So, you know, we were collaborating with Trend There's No Borders. We were creating Word documents from Wikipedia articles. We were emailing them to translators. They were giving us Word documents back. Um, Wiki text would get broken in the process. Uh, and then, you know, it was a lot of work for us as volunteers and coordinators to get this material back on the language in question. Um, so it was just becoming too burdensome. And, you know, over the years, English Wikipedia has been they've become more and more unhappy with having references in the leads. Um, English Wikipedia says that, you know, the references should be in the body of the article and the leads should not contain references. And that makes it difficult for translation when all you want to do is translate these short summaries into other languages. Um, English Wikipedia is also unhappy with us using easier to understand language. Uh, you know, our, our, the language level we're trying to write at is about a grade 12 reading level. And English Wikipedia is looking more for, you know, sort of a grade 18 reading level for medical content. Uh, and then finally, we lost some of our key contacts at uh, 20 There's No Borders. And then, you know, monitoring English Wikipedia content was simply taking up almost all of my time. So what did we do? You know, we took a step back um, and we changed a bunch of the workflow and we relaunched our translation process here in 2021. Uh, one of the key things that we started our own website, mdwiki.org, where we could uh, write these short summaries of key healthcare topics and then take these key healthcare topics and translate them into other languages of Wikipedia. So the final location for the content is still Wikipedia, but the starting location for the content is our own website, which gives us a greater ability to include references in the lead and to use easier to understand language that is easier to translate into other languages. Additionally, we've built a dashboard that has automated much of the process of um, managing the wiki text, and our dashboard um, uh, interacts with content translation, the, the uh, tool built by the Wikimedia Foundation uh, to move content between one language of Wikipedia and another. Additionally, this has given the opportunity for us to fix a number of the issues that content translation struggles with. One of the issues content translation struggles with is that it drops a bunch of references um, uh, and they weren't quite sure how to fix that. So one of the workarounds we've built, this new process has allowed us to build, is we expand the references, um, and then we, trans we load that content with all the metadata expanded, and then we shorten the references after it reaches the target language, and that has allowed us to keep the references from going missing, if you've noticed that problem with content translation before. And another benefit of having our own tool, our own dashboard, is it has automated the, the ability for us to uh, not only collect the impact of our work, but also it has allowed us to um, you know, follow along uh, and, and find translators who might be running into issues in you know, the target languages they're working in and provide them guidance around some of the, some of the technical difficulties. Additionally, this has allowed us to build, bring on a number of new partners, including um, you know, working with the WHO around uh, uh, hearing-related issues. We're working with uh, NIOSH around some, um, uh, some workplace safety issues. And, we, ha and we're, uh, we have a new volunteer translator group uh, called ProZed.com. So uh, as I mentioned, we launched about two uh, years ago. Since we launched, we've, uh, we've generated one, about 1,500 more um, uh, articles ready for translation into other languages. Uh, we've had 53 translators join us. They have created uh, almost 1,600 translations, which represents uh, a quarter of a million words. We've seen work in about 50, uh, 30 to 50 languages, and this content has re received about 1.5 million page views. This is an example of the type of material that we have put up for translation. Um, you know, the text is a little bit small, but what you see is, you know, here's a, here's a four paragraph summary. We're only recommending people, um, people translate, you know, only this amount of content gets loaded into the content translation tool. So it helps guide our uh, translators in wh what amount of content we're expecting them to work on. And one of the nice things about this is, you know, this is 300 to 400 words of text. This is something manageable. You know, it's not something like, you know, taking on a 10,000 word mass of English Wikipedia article. Uh, you know, when we started our, con our, our translation efforts, we got feedback from some of our smaller communities because we initially were translating entire articles um, and they simply found that that was too much content for the, you know, these small communities to manage on an ongoing basis. 
Additionally, you know, further research from the Wikimedia Foundation has found that um, only a small portion of people read beyond the lead of the English Wikipedia article. Uh, you know, 60% of people never make it um, uh, beyond the lead of the, of the English Wikipedia article, which, you know, tells us that if you, you want to have a big impact on our readers, make sure that the leads of these articles are understandable and are correct. So let's take a look at how the, the tools work. Um, so let me see, will this, uh, yeah, so where's the plus key here to make it bigger? Uh, found it, okay. So, um, so here's a look at the landing page of our translation task force. Um, you know, we tell a little bit of the background and then, you know, we have we have step by step instructions on, on how to translate your first article. Uh, and, you know, the, the starting point is our translation dashboard. So this lives on Toolforge. Um, and let me see if I can make that bigger here as well. There we go. Uh, and basically, what we see here is we have campaigns, um, and the campaigns are based on categories that exist within MDWiki. Um, and we have our main campaign, we have a campaign related to COVID, we have a campaign related to hearing, um, which we're working on with, uh, with uh, NIOSH. We have a campaign with respect to essential medicines that we're working on with respect to the World Health Organization. And what you can do is you can you know, pick one of these campaigns, so let's say essential medicines, and then you can put in your, your two-letter two language code. So if we pick Japanese, for example. Um, oh, I need to log in. Um, sure, you may as well. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so we have IOS um, uh, on MDWiki, and that basically allows you to use your Wikipedia username and password to log into this yeah, system, sorry. and it keeps all of your edits associated with you um, as you move through the content translation uh, process. Okay, once more. Uh, you might need to hit login with Wikipedia. Yeah, I did. Oh, maybe just hit login. I did both. Oh, okay. Want to try your credentials? Um, <laughs> I think I have two-factor authentication online. I will online. try one more, but... I can drive in this right. Maybe hit the plus one just to log in. Okay. Try once more. So um, what the tool will do then do is it'll generate a list of what articles are missing in your language that are ready for mm -hmm. translation into your language. Oh, sorry. Ah. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, and then and then from that list, you know, you'll you'll oh let me try it again. Um, and then from that list, you'll be able to then pick articles, and it, it pretty easily walks you through the process. The other feature that we've built is we've built ourselves a dashboard, and this gives us a breakdown of, of how people are doing with respect to translation. Um, and, and, you know, we see uh, Odia is leading the, the, um, leading the board with respect to the number of translations done. This retired orthopedic surgeon has translated uh, more than 1,000 articles since the relaunch of our efforts. Um, we have the number of languages we're working in, and then we have a graph of number of translations over time since we launched back in 2021. And then we have some additional tools here um, that sort of, you know, allows us to pick up quickly on uh, new translations that are occurring. And so what we see here is, uh, I can make it a little bit larger. These are the most recent translations that have occurred via this tool. We see this um, JSDS has been translating copper IUD into Spanish. Um, and you can easily take a look at the translations that result. Um, so to see whether or not this user has run into any issues from the Spanish community with respect to the resulting translation. And then we additionally have built tools that help fix a bunch of common issues. We're still working on improving those tools. So for example, um, when you translate from English into Spanish, the, the dates of the references 
January is not translated into Janvier um, or the Spanish equivalent. So we're building tools to help automate um, the, the bits of text that don't translate automatically with the content translation tool. Uh, and then we also have the ability to view what translations are in process. Um, and this, you know, some people start translations, they run into barriers, um, uh, and you're not quite sure why. And this gives us a list of people who have begun translations but maybe haven't finished them. And this allows us to reach out to those folks and see if they need further help. So it's, um, we built these tools to help people run, run translation campaigns. Currently we have campaigns primarily related to medicine. Um, uh, and healthcare topics, but there would be definitely the potential to run campaigns and other topics using this sort of software, this tool here as well. Oh, hey. So, um, yeah, so as I mentioned, you know, we, we also did a big effort to look at what sort of impact our prior translations had. Uh, one of the nice abilities that allowed us to figure out who all our prior translators were. Um, and it allowed us to figure out what percentage of all of Wikipedia's medical content came from these translation efforts, and it was more than 40%. And then we recently reached out to all the people who previously did translation uh, as part of um, uh, the, the healthcare efforts and encouraged them to re rejoin us for, for this new process. Finally, I'd like to do a, put out a big thanks to Mr. Ibrahim. Um, uh, he is our, our part-time uh, programmer. So we at Wiki Project Men Foundation, we have one part-time staff member. Um, that's this gentleman here from Ibrahim, uh, from uh, Yemen, I should say, Mr. Ibrahim, who's done much of our programming for our tools. And then, of course, a big shout out to uh, Dr. Chandra Root, who has been our star translator and has you know, written o Odia Wikipedia, has some of the best medical content within any language of Wikipedia, and that's because there's one single gentleman, and he's basically brought a medical encyclopedia single-handedly to his language, um, which is an odious a language not known to many people, but it's spoken by 40 million um, individuals in India. So um, these, uh, these sorts of heroes continue to inspire me. Okay, um, I'd like to open up for questions. Let's bring you a microphone and just so you can repeat that question so we can all, all hear. So I think that the main concern for me regarding the project that all of the project depending on the translation tool. So any issue in the translation tool will affect the project uh, in a negative way. I, in my part, I, I have a lot of concern regarding the translation tool in the Arabic language. So I still use the uh, manual editing way to translation or to write the uh, medical articles in Arabic language. So that is my comment only about. Yeah, so, so you know, there's, there's two parts to the translation tool. One part is just you know managing all the the um, you know the the reference templates, the info box templates, and helping to convert those from one language to the other. And then the other part of the content translation tool is the machine translation, and it's the machine translation you have concerns with. Yeah, yeah, you know the mach machine translation is not very good, um, uh, and that's why we you know human translators are a hundred percent key, especially for medical content, um, and why our work is so important. You know, you can go to the internet and you can use Google's machine translation to translate any English page into Arabic, but the resulting content that Google gives you is poor. We need real human Arabic speakers to come and, you know, take high quality English content or in other languages to generate high quality Arabic content. Um, and yeah, so, you, you know, uh, in Japanese Wikipedia, for example, they had concerns about machine translation too. And they have actually turned off machine translation for all of the Japanese language. Oh, but sometimes it's not easy for the ordinary people to, to pick the Arabic translation, for example, the medical one. I see the last example today that Google translation at all or any machine translation, for example, in Arabic cannot be translated between the cardiac as a heart and the cardiac as the organ of the stomach. They translate all of it as a heart. So w when you read 
the translation that uh, all of the content related to the target, related to the stomach, tra uh, translated at the heart, al qalb in Arabic. Yeah. So when you read the text, it's a very poor, poor translation. And you need a specialized one, we can say, or one rela uh, related to the medical field at least, who can differentiate between the two. Yeah, you know, and, and, and part of the solution to that is, you know, we're, 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 we're writing summaries in English, and we're trying to use easier to understand language. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, um, you know, the, uh, we wouldn't use terms like, you know, the gastric cardia for the English version. Mm -hmm. And if you avoid terms like gastric cardia, then, you know, if you, if you say, you know, the upper part of the stomach, um, then, you know, the machine translation will be able to handle the upper part of the stomach, whether they won't be able to handle the gastric cardia. And, you know, that's, the emphasis needs to be on the English folks who are writing the initial content to make sure that we're writing content that, that is easier for not only non-experts to translate, but also for the machines to work on. And yeah, you know, if you can provide us feedback of specific issues that are occurring on the English easier, the simplified version, that would be useful for us to work with. Mohammed? 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 Okay. Hello. Right. Uh, I I can see like this MD Wiki is trying to be independent from Wikipedia, is it? What's that? Uh, the MD Wiki is trying to be independent from the Wikipedia. Is that right? Um, so so you know we're of course a movement. Um, we're the Wikimedia movement. Um, uh, Wiki Project Med Foundation is a thematic organization within the Wikimedia. Movement. Uh, MD Wiki is a wiki run by the Wiki Project Med Foundation. It's not run by the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, uh, you know, that sort of distributes some of the, you know, technical infrastructure across our movement, which I think is, you know, a good idea for us, you know, as, as a whole for stability for the future. Um, you know, this, this is independent from English Wikipedia. Um, this does allow us to create more specialized versions of articles. Um, uh, but the resulting translations go into Wikipedia. So it's separate, but it's still related. So how do you ensure the, these contents in the MD Wiki reach out to the readers? Because I think uh, if you Google on the topics of any uh, health or medical things, the priority will be from the Wikipedia. How do you ensure this, uh, the contents from the MD Wiki to get to the people? And you know that's that's via translation, right? So so the content from MD Wiki is translated. As we said, there's 1,600 translations um, into other languages. So you know we're seeing more high quality content generated in languages other than English, which I think is key. You know, as as an English speaker, more than 60% of the internet is written in a language you understand. You know, that's not the case for so many non-English speakers out there. Um, so I believe we need to put more effort into languages other than English. Um, and this is part of what, you know, this translation effort is, is trying to do. All right, thank you, Dan. I think here the point that it's not the aim of the uh, MED Wiki to, be, to bring visitors. It's only for to help translator. It's, so it's not to bring visitors to MED Wiki instead of English Wikipedia. Yes? So, so it's you not the aim to make us be uh, yeah. It's not the aim to make a separate project mid-wiki for the medical articles and to bring the visitors to it. I think it's not the aim. The aim to help the translator and to avoid the, the guidelines and policies of the English Wikipedia related to the medical articles only. Yeah, so, uh, my, uh, my, th th like thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. Or I can use this one. So, you know, with respect to is this competing against English Wikipedia, um, you know, our offline app in English, for example, is now based off of MD Wiki. And the reason why, you know, we know that 80% of people who are using our offline app are from low and middle income countries. Many of them are healthcare providers. Um, and many of them are using it in a location where there's no internet. And some of the things that have been requesting is, for example, medication doses. Medication doses aren't allowed on English Wikipedia. You know, us having MD Wiki allows us to then provide um, medication doses to our offline users. 
So this allows us to do a number of things. You know, it allows us to improve our offline um, offerings to healthcare providers around the world. Uh, you know, it's not directly competing with Wikipedia because you know we're not well indexed by Google. Google is not sending us much traffic, um, and I don't think that's going to change. Uh, yes, the only thing that I want to add is that for the translation tool, the main improvement than uh, any other machine translation, as I tr as I uh, tried it, is that it used the interwiki link. So, for example, when we go to a term that is in Arabic Wikipedia, if the Arabic na Arabic name in on Wikipedia is correct, then it will use the correct name. But uh, other machine translation, they don't go to a reference. They don't go to Arabic Wikipedia to see what's the name of the article, for example. They use the general dictionaries which which do the the problem that uh, my colleague uh, raised it uh, around like for example cardia and there's other 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 examples for example intelligence as a as smartness or intelligence as you know the the policeman uh, or the security man so this uh, this uh, kind of term that uh, machine translation usually does not um, differentiate between but for the our tool uh, at the md wiki i tried it myself there's still there's still some mistakes it's not a human but uh, it is good quality in compared to any other, like Google Translate, because it used, it's referred to Wikipedia articles. Uh, other thing for the visitors, the outreach, as the um, uh, question raised by our friend there, uh, is that um, uh, 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 I want to mention that MD Wiki is connected by interwiki to uh, other wikis to English Wikipedia, for example. So this is another way to reach to MD Wiki, but uh, we are not in a state to, to compete English Wikipedia, but rather we are uh, trying to provide simplified content, more accurate content in our point of view. For example, as Dr. James said, there is, we add the doses, also we add the prices. The prices, for example, are important for certain parts of the world, which is we cannot add to English Wikipedia. That's why we have this version. And also for Internet in a Box, if you attend the session yesterday that Dr. James talked uh, about Internet in a Box, the offline version of MD Wiki is uh, is now available uh, in more extended way I could say than English Wikipedia articles and also we have other educational uh, resources like videos from Khan Academy from uh, Osmosis at a certain point we add some Osmosis videos so um, this is what I think um, it's not a competitive thing but we are trying to add something different that's it um, hi I'm a doctor too so but, however, I quit uh, on translating um, to Arabic, medical content to Arabic from English Wikipedia a long time ago because of the complicated content. I believe now science is highly complicated that I get to the point that I write the same word in English just with Arabic letters. So I, I always say, what's the point? I'm not explaining anything. No one is uh, having any benefit from that. So having a simplified language is better, in my opinion. But um, surprisingly, uh, this is not getting any traffic. <laughs> so <laughs> what's the point? Why would someone um, contribute in this project if uh, it will not have much audience? Mm -hmm. And um, my um, other uh, point is uh, that um, I'm not a programmer, <laughs> so uh, I try sometimes. I hope I will get, I will get there someday. Uh, but um, is there a way to um, prevent publishing something before it gets uh, a certain percent of editing so we make sure that it's not just machine translation no there is some manual and some percent that has been done so yeah that's better and can be published um, you know so so with respect to readership uh you know we the translations that have occurred we see that you know they've so far received um you know 1.5 million page views um in non-English languages. And, you know, 1.5 million page views, that's not horrible. That, that, that is some impact. Um, and, you know, of course, those numbers are going to grow over time. You know, these articles have existed for less than two years. Um, and yet, you know, people are still actively reading them in these target languages. Um, yeah. 
have a question myself. Um, I'm wondering, uh, as you presented this, uh, like the main version of the article is in English and everything gets translated from English. Is it considered a different way of doing it? Like, for example, somebody writes a very good medical article in Spanish and have it translated to other languages? So, you know, we were, we were previously translating into the language Kicha, um, and our only translators, our translators only spoke Kicha in Spanish. So we ended up doing a two-step translation process. We ended up translating from English into Spanish, and then from Spanish into Kicha. Um, you know, with re you know, one of the big efforts of this uh, of this project was to make sure that the starting content is of very high quality. Um, and because you know, I'm an English speaking physician, um, I can only really verify the content in English. Um, um, and you know, most of you know the, the few other physicians who are working on developing the content, the starting content, are also working in English. That's more or less why we start in English. And when it comes to medicine, you know, the, the lingua franca of medicine is very much English globally. I know, you know, I did some time in Brazil as a medical student, and the medical students were studying English, um, even though Brazilian was their first language. Same in Switzerland, even though, you know, English is not one of the official languages of Switzerland. The medical students in, in, in Lausanne, um, um, Geneva, or uh, Switzerland, were still studying in English. Uh, and, and that's the same in much of India. Um, and, and it's interesting, you know, like one of the pushbacks we got from the Swedish community is they wanted um, Swedish sources to be used for the Swedish medical content. Um, but the thing is, their own researchers, researchers in Sweden, are publishing in English. So even the Swedish experts aren't writing in their own language. And so translation is just, you know, a fact of life. Thanks. So um, this is a question, I guess, about synchronization. Um, I, I can totally see the reasons for forking, essentially, MDWiki off the initial starting point of medical content from English Wikipedia, and then it gets integrated into other languages. And there are multiple uh, seeding articles being created all the time. And the question is then, um, as material updates over time, even s some topics update very slowly, but some topics update quicker. And even for slowly updating topics in five years' time, in 10 years' time, this will be relevant. How are there plans for then updating and synchronizing the language, um, uh, the, the other language materials that have been generated from English content and also synchronization between updates to English Wikipedia into MD Wiki, updates into, in MD Wiki back into English Wikipedia? Is this all entirely manual? Are there, is there potential for some AI assistance, even at least for spotting what could be synchronized, even if it's then having to be manually checked? Yeah, you know, so, so right now we're, we're only listing articles for translation when there's zero content that exists in the target language. Um, you know, it, you know if, if there was four sentences of unreferenced content in, you know, a target language and you were to take three paragraphs of well-referenced uh, translated content from English and put it in that language, that is sort of an insult to the community in question. And, you know, you're stepping on their toes and really, you know, that sort of level of work can only be done by the core members of that community um, and can't be done by us or external translators that have joined us from, um, uh, you know, our, our various collaborators. So that's, that's a difficult step. Um, and then, you know, with respect to, you know, back and forth between English Wikipedia and MD Wiki, um, you know, we're, they're both under the same license. Material can be moved back and forth. Um, I don't think the English, you know, some of the English community don't want the material on MD Wiki. Um, yeah. I think, um, I think we're on time already. Sorry if it's just, okay. If it's okay, yeah, moving yeah, on with the next you. session.